What else could be on the ball bay menu today besides this incredible flaky carb overload known as solving? If you're one of those people that just have an unhealthy addiction to just eating straight bread, I'm telling you right now, you gotta try this. Layers and layers of just fragrant, delicious, sesame flavored flaky bread. Mm. You know? Okay, let's get started. We just need a couple of key ingredients, some five spice, sesame paste, and sesame seeds, along with some low gluten flour, aka cake flour. So we're gonna first start off by making the sesame filling because we'll need it to cool down later on. So start by sifting out some cake flour. Definitely quite the satisfying job to do. So now we have some sesame paste and I'm actually gonna mix this up because I just opened it and usually the oil is all the way on the top so you wanna give it a good mix. We're gonna drop some of that paste straight into our flour along with a little bit of five spice and a little bit of salt. Always gotta bring out the flavors. And now we're just gonna start mixing away. And this stuff actually mixes quite easily because of the flour, it's not sticky. So just mix it up until you get something like this. Nice. Very nice. Quickly onto the stove, we're gonna heat up some oil until it reaches a point where you start to see some very light white smoke. So you want it kind of hot for this, very hot, honestly. And then we're just gonna pour this sizzling oil straight into our flour mix. And of course, be careful while you're doing this and also pour the oil in increments, making sure that you're stirring and stirring away. You don't want it to burn and you don't want to burn yourself. So don't be a baka. Just mix until we get a very, very beautiful smooth paste, exactly like you see here. And then we're just gonna set that aside and let it cool down while we work on the next harder but funner part of the dish. And now we're gonna get out the big boy bowl and start sifting in some flour again, this time a much larger quantity. And we're gonna pair our baby up with some salt, sugar, and baking soda, making sure that she gets in with the right crowd so she can bloom beautifully later on. And then we're going to treat her with some hot water around 500 grams, but this amount can vary based on temperature and other elements. So adjust as needed. And of course, we're also doing this in increments as always when making dough, just combining that flour and water into harmony. And once we get that harmonic convergence, we're gonna drizzle on some oil. Then we're gonna begin the dough kneading process, pushing down and out while flipping the dough over. You can always start in the bowl once it gains some structure and then we can take it out. So take a look at her and you can see she's perfect with all of the qualities that we need very soft to the touch, slightly moist and squishy. And now we're gonna do some true kneading on the surface, really stretching that dough out for about three to five minutes. And then we're gonna ball it up and roll it up. It should feel slightly sticky to the touch, but not actually sticking on your fingers. That's the perfect dough. Back into the bowl, cover her up and let her rest for about 20 minutes, just to let her bloom a little bit. Back at it again, we're just gonna do some final kneadings for about mm, three to five minutes is all you really need. And then she goes back into the bowl, resting yet again for another 20 minutes. And then it's show time. Now dust your workspace and we're actually gonna be using all purpose flour from this point on. Bam. To get things started, use your palms to push out the edges, leaving a little center in the middle, just like this. Get your trusty rolling pin and we're just gonna start going at it. Rolling up and downwards into a rectangle shape rotating and repeat. And throughout this whole process, the one thing that you have to remember is to keep everything even. You want your size to be even from top to bottom and left to right. So be patient, take your time and roll out a flat, even rectangle shape about half a centimeter in height, maybe a little less. Using your hands that rub along the sheet, you can find out if there's any parts that are uneven and also make minor adjustments to the sides if needed. Back to our sesame filling, making sure that we stir it up and then it goes straight onto the sheet. Now this layer of sesame filling is what's gonna give this bread that super flakiness and irresistible flavor. This stuff is straight magic. And we're gonna make sure it covers the whole sheet, including the top and sides, but you can leave a little gap on the bottom. Okay, this is way too much sesame paste, so I'm doing a little bit of cleanup right here. We only need a slightly thin layer, but hey, you can store this stuff forever, so 
Now a dusting of all-purpose flour right on top, a thin layer. You probably don't need this much, I don't know why I use this much honestly. I'm just going overboard today I guess. Back to the sheet with clean fingers and we're going to do some rolling downwards into a spiral shape making sure that you're tucking and pulling very tightly. We want to make sure that this is secure. And you don't got to be that gentle with this, just try not to rip the dough, please. Some final stretches and pulls to make sure that the dough is even from left to right now. Now here come some traditional Chinese dough ripping techniques. Pinch the dough where we want it to come off and then using the other hand rip quickly downwards, just like that. Pinch and rip down and out and feeling the weight of the dough in your ripping hand is how you ensure that each piece is even. And now we're going to prepare two important bowls, one with some raw sesame seeds and the other with a touch of soy sauce and a bit of water as well. And then to fold. Make sure that the flap is on the top side and then we're going to push down a little bit and roll it out from the middle all the way up to the top. Even out the sides and then we're going to start rolling upwards very tightly and you want to kind of roll it into a cylinder making sure that it is slightly wide and then you get this perfect little scroll shape. Again, flap on top and now we're going to roll out one third from the top all the way out. When you do this correctly, it should fold back upwards almost perfectly in half. Just like that, turn it back around and again flap on top. Same concept, rolling out one third from the top, trying to make sure the body of the dough and the flap that you're rolling out are quite even in size. This folding technique is what's really going to give it those layers that you crave so much when you're biting into this delicious bread. And now we got this beautiful little folded rectangle dough ball. Fun, fun stuff, and of course, you gotta do this for all of them. And now to coat the top of each piece with some sesame seeds by first a quick dip in the soy sauce and then the seeds. And now you see we get that coating of sesame seeds just straight A plus to work right here. Good job. The color contrast and the swirls of the sesame paste just looks so good. Let it rest for about 15 minutes and then it's time to roll it out. This part's quite easy, so don't worry. Quick rolls top to bottom, rotate it, and then top to bottom to completion this time to get that flat bread that we desire. And just make your own little touches to get it up to top notch shape. And now it's finally time to get these babies to their final stage. Now we're using a very hot pan straight out of the oven and be careful. Place those sesame breads right on top and do not burn your fingertips off. You're not that stupid, are you? No. Now we can bring these to the oven at a very high heat for about 10 minutes. And then we're not quite done yet. We have to flip each one over. And this is actually much better to do inside an open oven so you don't lose that much heat. But I took them out just for video's sake. So if you can handle flipping these while it's on the oven tray, then do that instead. It'll give you the best results. And now our sesame infants have reached their final stages in life and they are just beautiful. And you can eat these with anything or just by themselves. The world is now your own solving. So enjoy it to the fullest. The gods of carbs would be proud of this dish. Okay, but honestly, the aroma of this is just off the charts, especially with this yo chow, this crispy yo chow just sandwiched in between these super fragrant sesame breads. And when you put them together in this cluster of just carb magic, you got crispy on crispy, but somehow it's not too overpowering. It's just so enjoyable with every bite. I mean, you cannot get tired of it because it just tastes so good. So good. The best thing about salping is that it can basically be just a bread for anything that you want to use. You can eat it by itself. You can add some yo tao in it like we're doing right now. Or you can add some braised beef and things of that sort. Braised beef and salping is actually one of my favorite dishes of all time. It is a super secret recipe in my family, but if you're really that interested in learning how to make it, just let me know. Let me see what I can do for you. Let me just give you a little sneak peek of what this tastes like.
wow. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe so you can continue to get amazing recipes uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. I mean, come on, who would want to miss out on all of these incredible Balbe recipes? Not me. Mmm. Peace out. <laughs>